dear participants of this uh, conference. Uh, for me, it is a great pleasure to be today in Delhi uh, and to attend uh, this uh, um, very important Asian Security Forum. I was uh, invited uh, by uh, the Institute, uh, by its former member, who is now ambassador of uh, India to my country. Uh, I'm uh, in such a um, short visit uh, in India, going uh, further to pa Bangladesh, and uh, learning experience uh, of your economical revival. In uh, Kyrgyzstan, which uh, has passed uh, quite a difficult journey over the uh, last uh, one and a half, two years, uh, we uh, consider that uh, acute, the most important agenda of our development today is economical development. You uh, certainly know that uh, Kyrgyzstan is today only democratic, I mean, only parliamentary country in uh, Central Asia. That was uh, not because of uh, such a great despair, but uh, that was the process which we have passed over the 20 years. Last year, 2011, it is a year for uh, each of us in post-Soviet countries, year of uh, um, 20th anniversary of our independence. Looking back and analyzing what's happened to us, how we have uh, developed over these 20 years, what we have reached, we come to the conclusion uh, that um, it was very difficult years, painful years. In <coughs> my country, as in other neighboring countries, such a serious processes like uh, privatization has gone. Everything would belong to uh, uh, the nation. Uh, what was the public good uh, been privatized? Uh, almost everything. Uh, we still have ministry for uh, um, public uh, property, but uh, it will be exhausted very soon because uh, almost everything is now in private hands. Sometimes it was so unjust that uh, only 10, 15 percent uh, of the uh, people they, uh, of, of the nation, they got, uh, they privatized those goods, uh, factories, uh, hydro stations, uh, and uh, all sorts of uh, other p properties. And uh, most of the people, uh, they became very poor. And such a transition certainly gave a, um, politic, uh, it, uh, had, had a political echo in the society. Uh, the uh, uh, nation diversified very much in uh, its political development, political parties uh, uh, became uh, such a uh, hard reality. Uh, last uh, uh, elections, when we had a parliamentary elections, uh, uh, more than 130 parties uh, have attended those elections. And of course, it was a matter of joke for uh, some of our neighbors. Look, how many parties you have, and so what, what is this, uh, uh, what kind of race it is if uh, more than 100 parties are uh, in action? But uh, I do hope that uh, many people uh, in democratic countries, they do appreciate it, that fact, because uh, this is uh, awakening of political activity in our countries. We used to have only one party, Communist Party. We used 100% of people were living under one party's uh, dictate. And today, people are awakened and they, they want to uh, attend these political processes. They want to contribute to the uh, country's development. So, uh, we have uh, uh, in Kyrgyzstan very strong uh, civil society. We do consider that uh, more than 500 those NGOs and uh, uh, the number of them uh, is uh, on the rise. Uh, of those NGOs, they are um, 
continuing uh, all sorts of activity where the hands of the governments are short. We have uh, in Kyrgyzstan uh, free mass media, and so this is such a treasury which we fight it for uh, this long 20 years. Um, internet, um, all sorts of uh, such uh, um, uh, media via uh, internet, all of them they are accessible for everyone. Uh, I do uh, believe uh, in the force of uh, such uh, um, means and instruments uh, in democratization of our society. And I must tell you that uh, uh, our achievements have uh, been recognized uh, widely uh, uh, in the international uh, community. Uh, 7th of April of 2010, that was uh, the day of uh, our revolution. Actually, you remember well that uh, uh, the first uh, runway of our first president, Akhaev, it took place uh, in 2005. And of course it was shock for everyone. In the former Soviet space it was uh, quite a big sensation that uh, how it's happened that president who ran the country the first uh, 14 years uh, he left the country, suddenly left the country. Uh, that was uh, the end of uh, privatization of the power in Kyrgyzstan by the clan, by the family. And uh, um, exactly the fact which I have mentioned, uh, all the public goods been sold uh, almost, and uh, the clan and uh, the uh, very close uh, uh, such uh, clientele of Akai's family, they, uh, they got uh, all these uh, goods. Um, the political parties and opposition was very tough and in 2005 we, um, we've been very uh, um, in such a uh, um, uh, quite aggressive manner we put to the questions why it, uh, it is so why uh, the largest uh, gold uh, uh, deposit in Kyrgyzstan which is uh, one of the seven uh, largest deposits in the world uh, it, uh, it has been also um, given uh, um, not a transparent way uh, to the um, investors uh, but 2005's results have been very sad. Um, President Bakiev, who came uh, of, after Akhaev, he was also, uh, he went the same way. Uh, he, uh, for President Bakiev, his son, they, um, again, uh, they uh, reigned uh, of Olymp and so they started uh, to uh, do even worse than uh, in Akhaev's time. Uh, opposition in my country never was silent, never uh, for, was uh, calm. And uh, if, uh, toward to the April uh, 7 uh, of 2010, opposition, and I was a leader of opposition in the parliament, uh, We've been struggling uh, with uh, Bakiev's uh, clan. Bakiev uh, was so cruel here. Um, uh, he has done uh, absolutely such a cruel uh, action. Uh, he burned down his chief of staff. Uh, he killings, political killings, uh, uh, such a repression of journalists. That became absolutely obvious uh, in uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, journalists uh, and uh, opposition leaders, they run from the country uh, to exile and uh, we've been uh, in despair. Um, uh, April 7 of 2010, uh, people uh, who came to the square uh, to, and so we're supposed to have a Kurultai, the national gathering there. They've been uh, uh, met uh, with the shots uh, from, the, um, uh, from the windows uh, of the governmental building. 87 people died there. And uh, uh, certainly um, days passed on and uh, we do uh, consider that uh, uh, this event in Kyrgyzstan was um, 
uh, was evaluated by the international community sort of uh, um, like regular. Uh, nobody uh, for bothered to themselves so much. When the same sort of events uh, came to Middle East, uh, to Arab countries, and so the world uh, set their uh, verdict that this is outrageous. This is uh, those dictators, uh, they have done absolutely wrong things. That's happened in Kyrgyzstan, uh, April uh, 2010. 87 people died, uh, a couple of hundreds been uh, injured, and uh, President uh, Bakiev ran away. Uh, the government, uh, the parliament, uh, everything was dissolved. And we took the power from the square of, uh, among those wounded and killed uh, of our countrymen, heroes uh, of the day. They said, no, just now we want uh, that uh, they will leave this uh, power right now, not tomorrow. So uh, th this was uh, such a tragic day and uh, we uh, set up the interim government. Interim government uh, has uh, worked uh, up to the um, uh, election, pre uh, parliamentary elections. We set up immediately the schedule that uh, we would uh, have, uh, uh, we would introduce uh, the uh, new constitution and it will be in three months and uh, we'll conduct parliamentary elections in half a year. And what is good about our development that we kept our schedule and we have uh, implemented everything on time. In three months we have introduced uh, uh, the uh, constitution with the parliamentary uh, uh, government, uh, governance uh, and uh, people came to this referendum. Referendum was uh, uh, transparent. Uh, uh, a lot of observers from the OEC, uh, European Union, Council of Europe came to Kyrgyzstan to watch uh, uh, those uh, um, elections and uh, um, a referendum has passed uh, the uh, parliamentary constitution. This is a real fact, of course, in our part of the world. In fact, we follow this huge country, huge democracy as India. We looked around. There is a very far such a uh, neighbors, uh, no, not neighbors, but uh, such a partners uh, like Central Eastern Europe. Uh, right after the, uh, the communist epoch, they turned to the parliamentary democracy. There is a Turkey with the parliamentary democracy, and there is a Mongolia with the parliamentary democracy, and certainly the closest, uh, one of the closest friend uh, and neighbor is India. And uh, that was uh, of, uh, of parliamentary democracy lies in our tradition of Kyrgyz people. We have such a gatherings like Kurultai, uh, for appealing to the nation, appealing to the people, uh, for, uh, willing to listen their voices. And uh, we, uh, mm, uh, with the same uh, referendum, uh, I was uh, uh, elected as the president, uh, so I was only uh, uh, such a uh, from legal, uh, if you want, person, because uh, so many countries have been uh, in question, uh, should we recognize this uh, for the new authorities of Kyrgyzstan? Even when we went to the such a traditional uh, for gatherings and alliances, uh, which we are part of for the last uh, 15 years, uh, they uh, didn't uh, allow us uh, to be uh, to, uh, part of those gatherings. Uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs sometimes went. So uh, with this uh, June 27 referendum, I was uh, uh, recognized as president, and then our legal life uh, started uh, in, uh, from in the world. Uh, in, uh, on 10th of the te uh, October, we have uh, conducted uh, parliamentary elections and uh, five uh, parties came to the parliament. Uh, we um, have uh, established uh, the, the parties uh, elected, uh, they built uh, the government and I must tell you that uh, today is uh, almost uh, two years how it works. It works. 
uh, it is a difficult journey it is new I'm tested for Kyrgyzstan but it works everyone uh, waits for collapse of such a governance but we are going ahead we are learning with each other there is no struggle on the streets there is no controversy behind the parliament everything wrong everything bad comes to the parliament opposition is very strong today they look after the government they look after the misbehavior of the government and uh, I'm telling you in details all this story uh, uh, and the latest uh, for the latest 10th of December uh, we had a presidential elections and uh, we have chosen uh, our president uh, uh, incumbent one and uh, I uh, passed uh, the power peace in peaceful uh, manner, constitutional form to another president. This is again new precedent in our part of the world because nobody wants to leave their position. Everyone keeps uh, strongly and they say that they, uh, for, um, there is uh, no other candidates uh, for in uh, five million or even more million millions countries. And uh, in my country, uh, that's, uh, that took place. My nation has this experience that one president leaves, another comes very peacefully. Uh, we are processing this uh, fact. We should uh, remember this forever, that uh, it is possible, it is right, it is constitutional, and we want to continue exactly with, uh, f uh, to develop uh, with this manner in the future. I think uh, there is uh, no places in the world now except probably our part and uh, Middle East now uh, trembling and probably other, of, uh, I don't know, other parts of the world were uh, unchangeable such a, of um, uh, rulers or uh, heads of the uh, states are. So we, uh, we uh, have uh, uh, passed this, uh, uh, this uh, journey and I'm telling you in details all this story just to tell you that uh, non-traditional challenges might be also political challenges political challenges like in my country because uh, certainly uh, three days you are discussing those challenges uh, uh, technogen challenges and uh, of um, uh, nature of calamities and uh, all of them are very serious but to turn the country from uh, one type of uh, rule uh, governance uh, to another one certainly our economical development uh, went down uh, we don't have uh, so many investors probably uh, for us in the country which is stable which has uh, uh, for um, long years uh, the same sort of governance uh, you should talk to the same people and so on so we are like after the social and political calamity but uh, we do con think we do believe that uh, this type of governance is transparent, open, uh, the uh, governance should be sustainable for the future and so we hope that uh, this type of governance will suit our nation, uh, uh, their national interests. Uh, my country, uh, as you know, lies uh, in uh, the center of uh, Central Asia. We have a thousand kilometer border with China. We border with Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. It's 200,000 uh, um, uh, 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 200, square kilometer country. Um, we are uh, very much uh, under uh, pressure of uh, natural disasters. More than 250 disasters uh, usually we have uh, per year of landslides, earthquakes. Uh, uh, this is high mountainous country. We have a lot of water. We are source of Sirdaria, all the waters uh, going down uh, to Central Asia. And certainly Central Asia is a very important uh, part of the world today. Uh, on the same uh, territory, like today, India, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, United, uh, we have the same uh, territory, but uh, Central Asia, but 60 million uh, people live in those five countries. 
and uh, problems uh, of uh, water are the most uh, serious and acute in our part of the world. Uh, um, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, we are the source of water. Um, in uh, my country, we generate uh, the water from the glaciers and they come down of, and uh, give the uh, water to Uzbek farmers uh, and uh, uh, they have millions of tons of uh, um, cotton, uh, uh, certainly with their uh, such a hard work. Uh, Water is precious in our part of the world and uh, struggle for water um, has sometimes uh, quite a tense uh, such a appearance. Uh, we do uh, f believe in Kyrgyzstan that uh, water should have a price, uh, that water is commodity, but uh, water goes, uh, we use only, let's say, 10%, uh, it goes down, uh, but uh, we uh, purchase gas from Uzbekistan on very competitive uh, market prices. Uh, when we do not have uh, n uh, uh, payment for this uh, gas, then certainly we have uh, troubles and uh, uh, this, uh, uh, such a relations uh, make uh, uh, tense sometimes uh, our uh, brotherly, uh, friendly relations between uh, two countries. Uh, so these uh, nations, Uzbek, Kyrgyz, Tajiks, used to live in Fergana Valley for centuries, uh, thousand years. But uh, now uh, for when we have a market economy, um, it's, uh, it turns, uh, when we are independent countries, it turns uh, sometimes uh, with a lot of difficulties. Certainly, I should mention in my such a detailed uh, talk about uh, the June events uh, of 2010, when uh, um, opposition in our country, uh, of, uh, opposition, I mean, uh, by Kiev's uh, forces, of running out from the country, they uh, make a, a conflict. Uh, they made a conflict between Kyrgyz and Uzbeks, uh, and uh, because of um, such a wise position of President Karimov, uh, inter-ethnical uh, uh, conflict uh, within Kyrgyzstan didn't turn to the inter-state. Uh, 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 war between Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan. We fixed up, we closed uh, this conflict. Doesn't mean that everything is uh, healed. Uh, not, uh, of course, uh, we have a lot of things to do today to make uh, this uh, uh, problem and the conflict uh, um, uh, to be healed. And uh, again, the friendship between uh, two our communities and Kyrgyz and Uzbek should come to the normalcy. I uh, think um, uh, I must tell you that we are the part of the world uh, such um, of troubles and problems. Uh, we, we've been uh, surrounded by uh, mod successfully modernizing, economically modernizing countries like Kazakhstan, China is going uh, far ahead and uh, of, um, Russia is uh, our strategic ally and uh, of, uh, Kyrgyzstan has a very serious boost from those sides uh, in their economical development. Uh, we have uh, two wings of our economical development, mining and uh, hydro energy sector. Uh, mining we have a lot of gold deposits uh, and other metals also. And uh, in hydro energy, uh, a lot of hydro stations been built in the Soviet days. Now we want to build more and supply hydro energy to the neighboring countries. So um, today we are inviting investors. We want to uh, keep um, country uh, in in uh, dynam uh, in dynamism. Uh, thanks to these uh, events. Uh, um, uh, thanks to international communities' uh, assistance, uh, country uh, uh, gone through these events united, nation was not split, and this is the greatest achievements of those days. Uh, my country uh, of, uh, is part of uh, many alliances, and we do believe that uh, 
in many uh, troubles and problems uh, going uh, alongside, uh, will be together and uh, in assistance uh, to each other. I uh, uh, hope that uh, people have uh, some questions to me. Thank you. Uh, the Her Excellency has uh, agreed to take a few questions, so floor is open. <coughs> yes, please. Please introduce yourself. I'm Joyce Lobo. I work for IDSA. Uh, Madam, uh, since your country is on the path of democracy, I believe it also wants to follow a very independent foreign policy. So in which case uh, the recent Manas Transit Center where you want the U.S. out of uh, uh, setting up a base. Uh, if you want, uh, do you want to have major countries or uh, would you like to uh, build your foreign policy in terms of uh, strengthening uh, regional alliances? Complicated question. I, I must tell you, countries also uh, not a um, regular one with this regard. We have a American base and we have Russian base also. So probably only country which has uh, two different bases, uh, uh, military bases. I mean, uh, for, um, uh, soon uh, next year it will be ten years of American base in our Manas Airport. Uh, uh, this is a very important uh, element uh, of uh, the war uh, in, uh, against terrorism in Afghanistan. All the, uh, for, um, uh, all the pilots, all the men of uh, um, power, they uh, stopped uh, over Manas and go further to, uh, to um, uh, Afghanistan and back also. So uh, this is very crucial element uh, of uh, U.S. armed forces. Uh, president, incumbent president, uh, he has uh, declared uh, uh, with his, uh, in his inauguration speech also that uh, uh, he wants to turn this airport uh, to the civil airport. Uh, so this will be a, quite a large uh, logistic uh, note in, uh, on the way from Europe to Asia and back. Uh, and uh, I do think uh, that uh, this is uh, very uh, uh, such a reliable way how to use uh, further up uh, this airport. 2014, this is ends of uh, um, uh, military actions in Afghanistan of all the Western uh, forces, uh, as it was declared. Uh, um, uh, so uh, we should uh, uh, look uh, forward and we should uh, define what we are going to do with this uh, um, quite, uh, uh, f uh, quite established place uh, uh, today. So this is uh, the solution which my government, uh, my leadership today uh, offers. Uh, uh, but I, I do believe that uh, even today over this uh, conference discussing uh, the matters of uh, Afghanistan's uh, conflict, uh, probably uh, all of you, you are questioning yourselves, uh, what is the ex strategy exit uh, uh, from Afghanistan? How it will go? Uh, what will be a really result of this? And uh, let's uh, wait, let's leave up to 2014. And uh, I hope that uh, this will be, uh, uh, it is very soon.
more friendly for the economic development of a country. I think you have both the experiences and it will be lovely if you can throw some light on it. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this question. Uh, first, I do believe that uh, our route is uh, irreversible. We can't go back. Uh, uh, we have passed the communist socialist system and uh, the world uh, moves like uh, that uh, forward and rear countries who kept uh, in such a socialist and uh, uh, in such a f or communist uh, whatever non-market uh, uh, system. Uh, secondly, I uh, think that um, we have uh, quite an interesting experience and so looking back and uh, uh, even uh, um, uh, walking uh, through the cities, uh, I would see that, uh, look, uh, it would never happen if we we'll continue to live in socialism uh, because uh, everything is, has changed so much. It is contribution of every person, business people, and if we we'll give them more freedom, uh, if we we'll, uh, organize better business environment, they would do much more than today. And uh, the whole country is changing. My country is famous uh, as Nepal also with the mountains, with the uh, opportunities for trekking, hiking, and uh, uh, for skiing. Skiing is booming in my country these days, and uh, I do believe that uh, very soon all my, our neighbors, uh, uh, Tajikistan, uh, Tajikistan has mountains, uh, but uh, I, I don't think that they have so much facilities which we are building in Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. I hope that the whole country will be on uh, of, uh, this mountain skis and uh, uh, Russian, Russian uh, come to, uh, to Bishkek uh, uh, to ski, Kazakhstani come and Uzbekistan will certainly come. In other words, uh, this business, uh, uh, private business, uh, this is certainly this is the broad avenue for our development in the future. And uh, uh, just uh, one remark, uh, this is painful road. It is not easy. It is um, uh, it is struggle between the uh, authorities and business community, and uh, we are obliged as uh, the government and uh, the authorities to uh, improve, uh, to liberalise the climate for them. And I don't see other option today. But certainly, again, being a post-communist country. I do feel, and so uh, especially when I was on this very high position as uh, the head of state, uh, I've heard so much uh, uh, claims from the people, from ordinary people, how it was good in the past. Uh, everything was uh, of, um, for the people, uh, pensions, uh, social uh, protection was done and today of course uh, in, a, in this such a painful transition when uh, we, have, we are going through endless reforms then uh, people suffer a lot uh, also but it uh, sounds like there is a no other route like a uh, painful route. Uh, of course there is Estonia which uh, switched uh, to the market economy like that uh, and uh, very, uh, develops very successfully one of the leading countries uh, among the 10, 20 uh, prosperous countries now of OECD. But our route was uh, painful. We've been very much bind to the Soviet economy in the past. Uh, we had a lot of factories uh, which have been uh, branches uh, from the uh, Moscow or St. Petersburg or uh, Yekaterinburg and so on. So it is uh, our uh, experience. Uh, Vishal Chandra from uh, IDSA. Uh, uh, Excellency, uh, would you like to uh, identify sectors or areas where you think India can contribute as your country undergoes economic uh, transition? And uh, secondly, uh, what is the perception in Kyrgyzstan uh, about uh, the reconciliation process in Afghanistan? Thank you. Regarding business, uh, I came and I learned a lot of uh, innovative approaches which uh, India is full of. Uh, I will go right after this, uh, uh, my um, statement here to learn about your ECHO pulse and uh, I do believe that uh, this is very uh, 
uh, important is application of IT to agriculture. Uh, I uh, do believe that IT sector uh, overall it is uh, crucial for us and uh, we are also in such a position uh, to, uh, um, uh, to have an electronic uh, for government and uh, all the application of IT to medicine, to education and so on. And uh, you have a, a lot of things to share with us. Uh, I uh, hope that uh, uh, your uh, big business will come for mining. Uh, it's not just uh, to take uh, pure gold, but a lot of uh, businesses around uh, any mining. Um, and uh, I uh, do believe that uh, uh, we, we can share a lot of uh, know-hows. Uh, my uh, energy companies, for example, uh, been in t uh, they are in uh, close touch with uh, your energy companies uh, uh, regarding the governance of uh, energy sector. Uh, my country is only um, CS uh, country today. Uh, no, Azerbaijan is also two countries uh, which are compliant countries uh, toward to the AITI transparency in mining. So we want uh, uh, more business uh, people uh, in mining sector, in energy sector, uh, in uh, of, um, uh, garment uh, sector, you of, uh, uh, with the, your variety and richness of handicrafts, you can help us also with that. My country has a brand uh, in handicrafts, but uh, I'm sure that we can learn a lot from, from you. Regarding uh, Afghanistan, um, there is a no uh, military solution first, I would say, regarding, uh, regarding Afghanistan reconciliation. Um, uh, with this regard, I do believe that uh, we must, uh, um, we must uh, convert and turn uh, Afghan, uh, Afghani themselves uh, toward to the economical uh, of, uh, survival and path. Uh, um, we would be more than happy to uh, be part of such uh, uh, trainings uh, for Afghani uh, farmers, uh, women. Uh, my country, uh, alongside with India or Bangladesh, we develop a lot of microfinancing and uh, uh, to teach and uh, to show, to present them uh, how people uh, on the grassroots can survive and uh, to trickle up. I think this is uh, great knowledge and uh, I, uh, I'm on the position that uh, all of us, international community, neighbors, we should contribute to, to economical uh, um, revival of uh, Afghanistan. Such institutions like yours and uh, so many other institutions in every country, they talk uh, and uh, write a lot about uh, this uh, situation, uh, how it's possible to base this in one country, such uh, neighbors and what is their reaction and so on and so on. Base uh, exists and yes, it was loaded there with the agreement uh, of Russia also because uh, Russia-US uh, uh, talks and uh, dialogue, uh, I, I do believe, is much closer than ours because those are big powers in the world. So, and uh, overall in CIS, uh, what, uh, how Russia behaves, does, it is a matter of their very, very intense and close dialogue between US and Russia. So. 
I do believe that uh, uh, the uh, American base uh, uh, from in uh, Kyrgyzstan so far is a matter of consensus of all powers there and uh, China's uh, authorities uh, being on uh, of, uh, such a high position meeting with high officials of China I would say that uh, uh, I never heard uh, f such a resistance and uh, uh, such a, a matter of their uh, discontent that uh, base is there and uh, why and uh, when they will leave and so on. So very, uh, very such a uh, politic um, and uh, position of China is very delicate uh, with this regard uh, and. Uh, uh, we are in strategic ally with Russia like CIS, like uh, agreement on the security, collective security. So, I mean, uh, so far, so good. We live together. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. I'm uh, Jackson Ewing from the RSIS in Singapore. Uh, Central Asia was left with some curiously drawn borders in, uh, at the fall of the Soviet Union uh, and uh, from the segmentation of the Fergana Valley to divisions of key environmental and resource systems, uh, divisions of, of different cultural and linguistic groups in a scenario not altogether dissimilar from what's faced by South and Southeast Asia in the wake of, of colonialism. So my question is how have you uh, how do you foresee these these challenges moving forward, and how what, what's the experience been like of Kyrgyzstan in, in managing some of these these border demarcation issues? Thank you. Thank you for this question because um, this is uh, really a real concrete problems which we are facing now. Um, Kyrgyzstan didn't uh, finalize uh, negotiations on border with Uzbekistan and Tajikistan and. Uh, of uh, the places uh, exactly in Fergana Valley, the most tense populated area. And uh, very difficult to uh, demarcate those uh, borders because uh, sometimes it will be one house, uh, Tajik house, another is uh, Kyrgyz, and uh, of, uh, the, the really the, the work is uh, um, objectively uh, difficult uh, in those areas. So we, uh, we have a, a from commissions, uh, governmental commissions. They work, they meet. Uh, we have a lot of troubles and problems there, and uh, people, uh, 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 for example, Kyrgyz, he, w uh, he will sell his house, and immediately, uh, if Tajik will buy this uh, house, then uh, the land goes uh, with him to another country. So we are watching these processes, and uh, uh, we, we must, uh, of course, uh, each of us, we are sort of jealous in some way. Uh, the population growth in Tajikistan is uh, more intensive than in my country. We, the scarce of land, the scarce of water, those are big problems in Fergana Valley. Uh, we treasure and value very much uh, the land uh, uh, problems. So. Um, I must tell you, in, with Uzbekistan, probably about 600 kilometers have left, uh, which we should define and demarcate. Uh, um, very difficult uh, of progress of this uh, commission works, and uh, uh, now it became even more difficult because of our problems over this last uh, June events, but still it's going on. Uh, for both sides are uh, very sober, very uh, such, uh, determined to do to finalize this work, and uh, I hope that uh, with the, uh, such a more knowledge uh, how to how to do this, how to organize, we uh, finalize. So we have finalized with China. We have uh, delimited the border with Kazakhstan. Two borders uh, have left, and so this is what we should do in future. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Your Excellency, may I continue? Please go ahead. Your Excellency, uh, right. what is your stand, positive and negative, regarding the stand of the India's admission as a permanent member of the Security Council with grip of power? Where are you? 
<laughs> Good. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, I think we are uh, of um, learning of uh, uh, we are in search of uh, uh, the position of consensus uh, in the Security Council uh, f- regarding uh, Security Council. All of us uh, members of uh, the United Nations uh, uh, we do consider the weight, the contribution uh, the scale of uh, India um, uh, to be uh, uh, to become member of the Security Council and uh, we do appreciate uh, also other countries uh, who uh, want to be a uh, member of the Security Council. But this is a matter of uh, consensus, and uh, I do realize that uh, today we didn't reach it yet. Sir, I'm the ambassador of the Dominican Republic, a small nation in the Caribbean in Latin America. I had the honor to establish diplomatic, formalize the diplomatic relations with your country during your tenure right. through Ambassador Oralvaeva. Um, we have striking similarities as countries, both Kyrgyz and Dominican Republic. But my question is, I followed very closely your tenure in, in, in Kyrgyz Republic, and I was always very proud to see a former diplomat, ambassador to USA, Canada, and Great Britain, and foreign minister, to rise as uh, head of state of your nation. I also saw that you were always very harmonious, very consensual, very balanced in tackling your different crises during your tenure. Do you feel that more countries need head of states with diplomatic background rather than <laughs> political background? <laughs> this is my question. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, your kind words. and. Uh, uh, we are uh, very proud to, set, uh, to, to have a, a diplomatic relations with your country and uh, I uh, also got um, greetings uh, from you via my ambassador here and uh, regarding uh, this uh, question I, uh, I was uh, yes I was a diplomat but uh, I was uh, politically very active also and uh, um, I've learned uh, a lot from the international uh, development that, uh, look, uh, uh, countries should be open, countries should be transparent, uh, countries should uh, be uh, in the civilized uh, club of the countries. Uh, I became recently a member of the Club de Madrid, uh, of those 86 uh, heads of uh, uh, the government and uh, the states uh, democratically elected. Uh, so we are very proud that we are in such a club. Uh, we are a country which has been recognized as democratically developed. All our uh, elections have been recognized uh, as uh, for open, transparent, just elections. And so we do consider that uh, we can do, we we show ourselves that we can do this and it is possible. And it is uh, easier than if you are closed and not open and uh, uh, every time you say that, uh, look, don't uh, enter to our affairs, we are, uh, we govern ourselves. But govern please on the uh, levels of uh, the whole world then it is all right so and i've learned this i've been uh, to the um, to the best uh, let's say of in in many countries i traveled and uh, i've i've been shown uh, the best examples of the of the democracy so i think uh, that was my contribution that i tried to implement this in my country and we've done it thank you thank you very much Ladies and gentlemen, you would agree that we had a most uh, fascinating uh, talk by uh, Madam Rosa Atunbaeva, who has uh, been one of the architects of uh, Kyrgyzstan's uh, uh, transition to democracy and its modernization and opening up to the rest of the world. And uh, in the process, uh, she has given us uh, uh, insight into the developments, how Kyrgyzstan is uh, growing. and we
wish uh, the country all the best and of course there are some lessons for the diplomats who want to become the heads of state so m there are many of here who can take uh, these uh, tips uh, with uh, them but thank you ma'am for coming and uh, sparing time and we hope that uh, your stay in india is uh, fruitful and uh, uh, and now we have a cup of tea please join us for a cup of tea.